everyone, this is Al-Fadi, and uh, I'd like to welcome you back again to a uh, continuation of this uh, wonderful series that we're doing here, myself and Dr. Jay Smith, uh, from the book that we have been speaking to you or talking to you about, which is this book, The 20 Samples of Correction Early Quran Manuscripts, uh, authored by our dear brother Daniel Brubaker, and in this book he gives basically uh, specific examples of some corrections that were done to earlier Quranic manuscripts. And the point behind this, of course, that myself and Jay are trying to address is that this is another proof uh, in scholarly work, uh, like the work of Daniel Brubaker, uh, that earlier Quranic manuscripts uh, have been, let's use the word edited, if you wish, to try to match a standardized reading. And with that said, I want to turn the table over here to my dear brother, Jay Smith. Hey, great to be here again. This has been fun. We've gone through already nine of these corrections. We're going through 20 and plus one, so 21 of these corrections. In our, before we left, in the last episode, we looked at additions, the insertions, uh, we looked at erasers, those kind of things. Uh, we're now going to go back to a, another insertion. But we're going to look at two errors that come simultaneously. So let's go ahead and look at that slide. And we're, this is correction number 10. And when you say number 10, it's in the book. Number 10 in the book. In the itself. book itself. We're going that's by right. what is in the book, in the sequence that's in the book is, as right. well. Uh, this is, again, from the Petropolitanus. This is the manuscript that is in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, there in France. Uh, this is the book that François de Roche has been responsible for. And we're looking at... Specifically, Surah 2, Ayah 137, chapter 2, verse 137. Now, the word bimithli has, uh, was omitted when you, and if you look at the slide, look at number one, look at the arrow there, you can see where bimithli has been added, obviously at a later date. What does bimithli mean? Um, like as, or as like, you know, or similar to. Okay. Yeah. In the original, it used to say, if they believe in that which you have believed, that's what it used to say, that's without the bimithli there. Now that they put bimithli there, it now says, if they believe similarly to that which you have believed. So there, you say, okay, so what? Why is that uh, that big a problem? Well, the difficulty is, take a look at number two. Look at arrow number two. Mm -hmm. When you look at there, you will see it's pointing to another B. That's right. There's bima. So there is, read uh, right there, read what it says the, in the Arabic there, if you can read it. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the second one you mean? Bima amentum. You know, okay. Bimithli, uh, basically, or, or uh, as you have believed. Okay. Yeah. And obviously the B should not be there now. That's so right. Amano bimithli, bima. What's the B doing there again? That's right. So it so whomever did this basically forgot to remove that one. Forgot to remove That's right. the you second know. B. You know, the first time it was saying aminu uh, or aminu in the past tense probably, you know, believed in what you have believed in. Now it's saying believe in a similar uh, you know fashion as they believe in. So you can see this is yeah. a, grammatically it's incorrect as they have it now. This is incompetence, but it's more than that. This shows, obviously, that this was added at a later date. There's something else that you can see here, looking at Bimithli, that uh, it, it's added at a much later date, because there you can see the diacritical dots. That's right. And this is, by the way, very interesting. I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, because this diacritical uh, marks, this is a later invention, the one that like this. That's what they're doing. Bimith. So somebody is doing this. This is the dash right here that you're talking about. So it's like a two dash. That's right. It's, it's yeah. well, explain. This is the Kasra. That's the Kasra. And, and the Kasra will help you to say it, be me, mithl. You know, so if it wasn't there, you can say, be ma, methal, be methal. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, so the avoid, you know, you pronounce it the wrong way, obviously. Somebody took the time to try to help you. And this is a system that was added later, actually. Much later, because yeah. we've, as we said in our earlier episodes, these. Not only, not just the dotting, but the vowelizations were added at a much later date. That's right. It, you can also see, as we've mentioned before, the writing is different. It's much thinner. It's a completely different nib. It's a different ink. It has the diacritical marks, the the the, the dot for the B, and also for the th, the the dot yeah. for the th, and okay. you can see also then the 
mit, be mitli both times, you can see the kasra at the under the bee and under the lamb. And if I want to add also, uh, I mean, from a theological standpoint, there is a big difference between saying that, like, for instance, they see in English, uh, the original would have read, if they believe in that which you have believed. So now we're talking about something that you believe in. The second one is saying, if they believe similarly to that which you believe in, here is the form of how you believe in. Yeah. Not the object of belief, but maybe the practice of that belief. Big difference. So you could write a whole thesis on this. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just the grammatical, uh, I mean, the, the uh, uh, I should say the theological uh, issues is probably one of my passion is to try to show not only you're changing things, but you are theologically influencing now how people ought to behave and believe. There you go. Now, obviously, the reason why they have even put Pimitli in there and forgotten to take the B off is because so it would be standardized. And we've been saying this over again. This is a recurrent theme. This is a standardization of the text to standardize it to the modern text, the Huff's text, this one that we have in our hand today, standardized in 1924. More than likely, this was done after 1924 so that it would keep the standard. Let's go to the, the next one. And, and one thing we want to add here, you know, uh, uh, here's why uh, Jay keeps referring back to a standard that is followed. You know, the way it was written uh, in that uh, uh, correction number 10, uh, without adding this bimithly, it was perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. It's nothing like it's something that is odd. And it's also confirmation that there was a reading that this writing was based on. You write something based on something you know, technically speaking. But later, somebody decided, no, 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 we don't like it to be read this way. We want to read that way. And it's not that they liked or disliked. Yeah. They had to because of the standard. That's right. They had right. to now correct it to bring it into standard form. Absolutely. Now, I, I want let's look at number 11 because here you have an insertion. And uh, mm -hmm. we're on the Topkapi manuscript. This is considered to be the best manuscript. Uh, this is the one where the Muslims who are, who are now confronting us say, you can't find any problem with this manuscript. And the reason they have really reduced themselves back to just one manuscript, it used to be 100,000, then it went down to around 1,000, then it went down to six when the Altakulic and Ekmildin came with their uh, studies back in the around 2009. Now, Today, 2019, 10 years later, it's only down to one. Uh, and because we keep on destroying every one of the other ones, but they're still holding on to this. Here's the top copy. Take a look at that slide, and you will see Surah 66, uh, verse 8. And if you look at number one arrow, look at the arrow number one, and it's pointing to uh, the lam lam he, which is the, the word Allah on the margin. So it's, you can see this is obviously has been added at a later, later date. It's much thinner. That's right. It's in the wrong place. Now, it, it occurs near the beginning of the verse, since originally the first Allah of this verse was not present. So that's the first problem. It's, it's clear it wasn't, for sure. So now it says, originally it says, Oh, you who believe, turn to a sincere repentance. Allah is not there. That's right. Like the other ones, we saw the number two uh, corrections where we did nine of these, where Allah has been added in. It's about put it as, oh, you who believe, turn to Allah with sincere repentance. Now, now look at now arrow number two. Notice that the original Aleph that it's pointing to after the illa uses a larger nib, suggesting an error to the original text. The change has been made with a very small nib and is probably a modern intervention. It now conforms to the 1924 Huff's text. Can you explain the nib, basically, what you mean by that? For the people? wider nib versus the narrow nibs. So no, the nib so. Of, the, of the pen itself. Exactly. So that's what we're talking about. You know, people can see one is the alif is very dark, wide. The other one is in blue, which is uh, to complete it, to read Allah, basically, is very uh, narrow or thin. And so they had to put Allah in there. In this case, they had to. That's right. Because they've already got the Aleph there. So right. that's a, a clear indication that they have corrected it at a later date. Now let's go to slide number 12. And here is another eraser. This is now on the Petropolitanus, Petropolitanus that's right. manuscript. And, and this one is extremely interesting, by the way. Okay. This, I can see you're licking, lick, licking your lips, so you're ready for this one. Zero 03, Ayah 171, or chapter 3, verse 171. Go ahead. Take it over to you. This is one you love. Uh, here, here is what I wanted to do. I apologize. I, I clicked on the wrong uh, one. We're going to go back now, and, and here is what we're going to do. So I want to say this. No one writes the word this way, very elongated, just to, you know, basically fill a gap 
That tells me right there, something was there, was erased, and the only solution to the problem was to just elongate the da and add the lamb there to make it look like it was the intended word. So you have the dad lam of the fadlin, which is the word bounty. That's right has been written over an eraser. And you can, they didn't really do much of an erasing Correct, there. because we can see this is older than the rest of it. It's a completely different ink. That's right. It's a different color. It's a different nib width. It's a much thinner nib width. And as you've been pointing out, <laughs> they really have elongated. It's, it's almost extreme. Absolutely. This, at least there were two to three words in here that were erased. Okay, now take a look at number two. Look at the number two from above. It's pointing down to those erasers, uh, those erased letters. They are clearly, you can clearly see them underneath. There's about f anywhere between five and 11 of those letters that they did not do a very good job of erasing. Right. And these include four upward extending letters. You can see mm -hmm. one, two, three, four. If and I, can, I can show people. Why don't here, you go ahead and circle one. those? Here is one, here is one, here is one. I mean, it's very clear you can see them even here, this one, this one. There is a lot of them that are visible. And there's one at the very beginning, which is a short tooth letter. That's right, right here and right here also. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah. So this correction, it's clear that this is a much later invention, and, and therefore it is obvious that, that they had to quickly write over top of it. So here is an eraser overwritten. They didn't do a good job of erasing it. We can now see what they were trying to get at, and this now conforms to the 1924 Huff's text. And by the way, it's, it's either they thought they did a good job, and time began to reveal it to us, or they just were careless about how they did it because maybe they didn't think anybody will have access to it other than those who were reading from it. I, I, you know, we could go on for hours as to what their intention was. It's right. obviously, I would suggest that they had to, they, had, they didn't have much time because they needed to make sure that these all conformed to the standard text. That's right. You would have thought, being this important, if this is such an enormous ma important manuscript, why in the world did they do a better job of erasing it so that we would not see this intervention? But this is definitely a human intervention. Absolutely. Remember from the very beginning, this is what we're looking for. Right. When they say that has never changed since, since the time of 652 up until today, there have been no changes. It's exactly the same text. The only way you could change it if someone individually, if a human, did the changing. And that's why in every case that we've looked at, we've now looked at thir uh, 12. We're now going to go on to 13. Let's go right into 13. And here we'll find another eraser overwritten. And this is from the, the, uh, the text that is in St. Petersburg in Russia, National Library of Russia, right. uh, from Marcel, the Marcel Collection. And this is uh, also... The top one, we're look, that's the top one, because we're looking at actually two different manuscripts here. The bottom manuscript is from the Petropolitanus manuscript, which is in Paris. And that's the same, basically, passage we're dealing with. Same passage. Right. Same correction. That's right. That's what's fascinating. So we have two completely different manuscripts, one up in Russia, the other one in Paris, in that France. That means it's the same family of manuscript that it started from. Okay, so let's now look at chapter yeah. 34, verse 35. Now look at number one, uh, look at the number one arrow. So we're looking with the, the top picture. In the first example from the Marcel manuscript, the uh, National Library of Russia, the final lamb of, and the word in Arabic is kala. Go That's ahead, right. you say it. Uh, uh, for the uh, singular, you mean? Yeah, it's for masculine yeah. singular. Kala, yeah. Okay, which is, is what is translated what? Um, he said. He said. It's yeah. just a simple, yeah. he said. Yeah. That's been erased. The kala has been erased, and in its place, go ahead. What are the letters there? Kalu. Kalu. So it's a lam, wow, and aleph. They have been said. written. They said. So plural. it's been made to singular, masculine singular, up to plural. Correct. It's been taken from the singular to the yeah. plural. Now, the original was, he said, we are more uh, than you in wealth and in children. Now it says, and they said. We are more than you in wealth and in children. So now it has conformed to the 1924 Huff's text. That's important that they conform right. it. But they went ahead and did it in this other manuscript as well. So this is not all by itself. This is not a, a, this is not a 
you might people might say, well, this is just a scribal error. They weren't it's not thinking an through. isolated incident. It's not an isolated incident. Yeah. This is not because a scribe was not was inept. And it shows or, intent here. It shows intent, and it looks like that this was a school, a completely different reading, because we have two different manuscripts who are showing the exact same verse, the exact same change, That's the right. exact same correction from Kala to Kalu, from That's he right. said to they said. That's right. So look at number two now. There's number two up there. In the second example from Petropolitanus manuscript, the exact same change, erasing the kala and replacing with the kalu, they said. That's right. Again, conforming it. So you cannot have people coming up to you and say, well, this guy just was careless. Well, wait a minute. There's not just this guy. Here are two different guys that are now having right. to change the yeah, same problem. These things don't happen just in vacuum. Somebody ordered something, and they're trying to fix it to match basically whatever order they have received. So what if we... Stop well, it right here and pick it up. Let's do that. This is a episode. good place to stop. Thank you, brother. It gets me excited to finally get have the chance to get this out for people to watch it. And we're hoping, and I, I, I want to look and see people who are watching this. We're hoping that you people, I understand an awful lot of you have probably never seen this before. That's right. Muslims, this is the first time you've seen it. For those of you who are not Muslims, those of you who are not Arabists, who do not know Arabic, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. We're trying to make it as slow as possible. We're trying to make sure that you, who are not the experts, who are not scholars in this field, listen, our engineers who are here behind the screen, we ask them, are we making sense? Does this make sense to you? Are you following what we're saying? Every one of them is getting what we're saying. They're nodding their head right now. The mm -hmm. Why? Because... For everybody around the world, we want to make sure that you are understanding so that you can use this in your discussions and when you also actually bring this out. Please do use it. Please don't run away from it. Make sure you get a copy of this book and then take it to your Muslim friends. Go with who, those of you who are Muslims. You unpack it. You start asking your imam. You start asking your scholars, why is it we haven't been told about this? Why is it we didn't know anything about this? Amen. Why have you been claiming all these years that this book has never been changed? And yet here, Al-Fadi and Jay are coming up with not just one, not just two. We've already come up with 12, 13 of them. We're going to have another seven yet to go. God bless you. It's been terrific, terrific being here with you on that. And thank you, brother. And uh, thank you, everyone, for watching this. And you can see why I wanted uh, Jay to slow it down and we pick it up in another episode because there is a lot of meat here that we would like for you to uh, enjoy and be able to understand these critical assessments that we are making. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together, we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.